Alain Prost, the legendary former F1 driver, has raised eyebrows with his recent comments about the start of the 2023 season. He believes that all F1 teams, including the dominant Red Bull, are experiencing a crisis. What is the reason behind this statement? Stay tuned to find out. Alain Prost stated that the next few races would be very important for the Red Bull team. This is because Sergio Perez, one of the team's drivers, seems to be more determined than ever to compete with his teammate Max Verstappen. The Red Bull drivers have split victories at each of the three races so far this year, Verstappen taking two and one for Perez. But the reigning world champion opened up a 15-point advantage over his teammate after a qualifying off from Perez saw him start from the pit lane in Melbourne despite the Mexican's recovery into the top five. Prost thinks that if the competition between the two drivers continues to be intense, it could cause more problems within the team. In other words, the team may become less united and more tense. It's important for Red Bull to manage this situation well if they want to keep doing well in the championship. Prost wrote in his column for French publication Le Quip, It's a system of favouring a single driver, Max Verstappen, which has worked so well, is showing its first signs of failure. Sergio Perez, now settled into the team, is discovering that he can win and is no longer willing to compromise to stay. Even if Red Bull's domination continues, the next few weeks will be crucial for the reigning world champions. It's clear that anything can quickly throw a spanner in the works and that even at the top, a crisis is never far away. Regarding the rest of the field, Prost believes there is a crisis in play at almost every team on the grid in some way, shape or form at the moment, with Red Bull's pace at the front providing a big headache for the chasing pack in particular. He referenced his former team at McLaren in falling further away from the front when it had planned to go in the opposite direction, while Mercedes is stuck for now with a car concept that is not the correct one to be challenging at the head of the field. He wrote, It's a weird start to the season. Wherever you look, you can see it's not going well, and that, in a way, it's already a crisis, and a crisis on all levels, whether you are a big or a small team. There are, of course, the factory or historic teams which are suffering, such as McLaren, which is not only not rebuilding, but year after year is plunging. There is Alpine, whose recovery is still slow in coming. There is Mercedes, which persists in its admittedly innovative concept, but which obviously does not work. The only exception to the rule for Prost in the current scenario is Aston Martin, whose progress from last season has been clear to see, going from 7th in the constructors' standings for the past two years to genuine frontrunners in Formula 1. With the team's new factory still under construction and further infrastructure changes to come, the four-time world champion believes the Silverstone-based team have provided the template for others to follow in looking to the future. Prost then went on to explain Aston's approach. Last year, it decided to draw a line under its 2022 car and agreed to reinvent itself. First, it changed drivers without a second thought from Vettel to Alonso. It took the time to understand what it was doing and is now at the top far from the crisis that the others are going through, a lesson for all the other teams. Now that we know what Pross said, let's analyse his comments on Red Bull's crisis. Later on, we will also delve into his remarks on Aston Martin and whether they are truly an exception. A good comparison for Red Bull's current situation is Mercedes' performance during the 2014-2016 season. Except Red Bull's second driver Perez is not as big a threat as Nico Rosberg was back then. During those years, Lewis Hamilton was the stronger Mercedes driver, but Rosberg was still close enough to fight for the championship and ended up winning it in 2016. However, there were some problems between Hamilton and Rosberg, such as the infamous crashes in Belgium in 2014 and in Spain slash Austria two years later. In the 2016 decider in Abu Dhabi, Hamilton deliberately slowed down the race in the hopes of Rosberg being overtaken by other drivers. These actions didn't help the team, but showed two drivers who were confident in their abilities and willing to do anything to gain an advantage. Red Bull isn't a stranger to such battles. Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber had their incidents, particularly in 2010 and 2012 when Webber was at his best. That led to collisions and team order controversies, which could have easily cost a title or two given the looming presence of Fernando Alonso's Ferrari. We never got to see how Vettel Weber as an all-Red Bull title fight might have played out, though as McLaren and Ferrari were also in the mix when Weber came closest to the crown in 2010 and 2012 was mainly Vettel vs Alonso. The tensions surrounding Red Bull's management of the closing stages of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix had echoes of this era, with Verstappen clearly wanting a run at victory and Perez suspicious of his teammate, especially when it came to the fastest lap point. For an example of a time such a rivalry was counterproductive, you only need to look to 1986 when the Williams duo Nelson Piquet and Nigel Mansell battled. 
they took points off each other, often made life difficult for the team, and Prost was able to nick the title in an inferior McLaren. That was a situation that was doubly complicated by Frank Williams suffering life-changing injuries in a car crash early in the season and Piquet demanding the number one driver status he believed had been promised to him. When a car is as superior as this year's RB19, the second driver's chances of performing well over the season are significantly increased. Even on a bad day, the support driver can still secure a high position due to the car's performance. This can create a challenge for the lead driver if they experience reliability issues or bad luck. Imagine if Verstappen experienced two back-to-back -back retirements, which could happen, and as a result, Perez inherited victory both times. Verstappen would lose 50 points to Perez. To make up for this loss, Verstappen would have to beat Perez into second place in seven consecutive races. Even if Verstappen outperformed Perez in every race where they both finished and the score was 7-0 in his favour over nine races, they would still be tied on points because of the 50-point deficit. With a car this fast, even on a bad day when the second driver is 0.5 seconds off the pace, he should start on the front row. And from there, he should dominate the rest of the field. In 2016, Rosberg beat Hamilton in four races when they directly competed against each other. In contrast, Hamilton won against Rosberg in 10 races when they directly competed. Despite this, Rosberg still managed to win the championship due to his consistency throughout the season. Out of the 10 races in 2016 where Hamilton beat Rosberg, Rosberg was still able to finish in second place for five of them. This meant that Rosberg only lost 35 points to Hamilton over those five races. However, Rosberg gained a significant number of points due to events outside of Hamilton's control, such as a power unit failure in Malaysia while leading, being hit by Bottas in Bahrain after starting from pole, and engine problems in China and Russia qualifying sessions, which made him start further down the grid. In contrast, Hamilton did not receive any extra points due to Rosberg's car failing to finish a race. In other words, the difference in reliability between their cars had a bigger impact on the championship outcome than the five points that Rosberg won by. There was no logical reason for Hamilton's sorry sequence of DNFs. At one stage, there had been three Mercedes power unit failures between all of the eight Mercedes powered cars all year. Every one of them was in Hamilton's car. Is Perez as close in performance to Verstappen as Rosberg was to Hamilton? No, he's not. But in this scenario, that wouldn't even matter, so long as he's good enough to finish second in a car that's got a second per lap on the rest of the field. He wouldn't need to be Rosberg close if his reliability was sufficiently better than Verstappen's. There might indeed be crisis looming in Red Bull. Talking about Aston Martin, there are reports that Aston Martin team owner Lawrence Stroll will not be enjoying watching Fernando Alonso upstage his son Lance. Aston Martin's strong start to the 2023 season continued at last weekend's Australian Grand Prix, where Alonso finished third behind Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. Former Williams and Ferrari team manager Peter Windsor believes Stroll Sr. will have mixed feelings about the two-time world champion becoming the centre of attention. Windsor said at the end of the race, with all the Aston Martin mechanics in green in front of the podium and Fernando being Mr. Charm, Mr. Charisma with the fluorescent green Aston Martin cap and smile and just looking $100 million, you had to think, not sure Stroll Sr. will be happy about the way things are going at the moment. This is Fernando almost becoming bigger than the team. And Stroll will be thinking, what's happening with my son? What's going on? I'm probably exaggerating there, and probably it will not be that, but I'm just suggesting that it is a sign that this is a very different sort of team. Prost's statement that Aston Martin is crisis-free may not be entirely accurate, as a potential intra-team rivalry may arise as the season progresses. Now it's your turn. Do you believe that Red Bull will experience a crisis as a result of the rivalry between Verstappen and Perez? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always get to watch more videos like this. See you in the next video.